Hi there, welcome to another video about the Cohesity Data Management Platform. I'm Alistair Cook and you may recognise this cluster as my lab cluster as you've seen in previous videos. If you look a little closely you'll find that I'm not managing it through Chrome on a Windows desktop as I normally do. Instead I have uh, Safari running on my laptop and so I'm talking to the Helios portal. And in there you can see all of the standard uh, behaviours of my cluster as you saw in a previous video when I added this host uh, this cluster to uh, Helios but now I have a second cluster so if I come into the drop down list here I can see also my lab cluster so the CO cluster runs in my home lab and the lab cluster runs in the v brown bag lab and so that's two configurations, pretty much the same configuration for the two uh, virtual edition clusters and they're both being managed out of the central Helios portal and I can have a look at an overview of all of my clusters and particularly see all the protection runs and if there are any SLA violations or if there are any health issues across my entire estate. And that's where we see a lot of value in the, uh, the Helios platform is to manage a collection of cohesity clusters rather than just managing individuals. But today's video isn't so much about Helios, it's about setting up replication between my two clusters. So I'm going to pop into my CO cluster. This is the one that is protecting the majority of the virtual machines in my environment. And I want to set up some replication between some machines that are protected here in the Demitas uh, lab out to the vbrownbag lab. And I'm going to do that through the remote clusters function and setting up a pairing of the two clusters. So if I put the shared uh, 20.21. So networking wise, these two clusters are, um, are both on their private networks, but there is also a shared network that's routed between them, uh, which happens to be my home network. So there we go. 20.21 is the IP address of the remote cluster as I'm working from CO cluster, so that will be the lab cluster. Let's hit the connect button on there and it says yes, all is good. We are validated uh, and connected. Let's turn on replication. So my local storage domain, so that's one of the things that you have to do in the replication is specify a mapping between storage domains. So if I specify my default storage domain at both sides because it's the only one that I have and hit add, that gives me a mapping. Cool. Uh, compression and encryption, you probably want those over untrusted networks. In fact, you want encryption across any network. So let's turn that on. Mm, let's not turn that on because I'd have to work with the encryption keys. And you can see we can set some transfer limits as well. All right, let's create that. So now we have that replication between the two. What I should be able to do is come into a protection job and make some changes to that protection job for the replication. Now I have this particular protection job here called CE for Cohesity and it's backing up two machines, two uh, Windows machines, so a domain control and a file server that run inside my Demitas lab uh, and these are disposable, these are things that I can, um, can play with and uh, change at will. Uh, so what I need to do is to change this job and actually set up replication. But I think I need to do that through the policy. Let's take a look at my protection policy and look at replication in here. There we go. Uh, replicate every, after every run, retain for three days and only replicate on a full successful run. Cool. Excellent. Where should I replicate to? My other cluster. Fairly easy to set up. So I'm configuring this at the protection policy level, the same as I do all of the destinations. So let's save that. Yep, this job is using the policy. We'll hit the protect button just to make sure that, that policy has been updated. And then We'll come back. In fact, what I'll do right now is trigger a run of the protection job, which should then include the replication. 
let's just say back up now and it should do the replication for me according to policy we'll see uh, I guess there was a dialog in there that said do I want to replicate on this run because I guess this isn't a backup that's running according to the policy we'll see how it runs and we'll come back and take a look at it in a couple of minutes well that protection run only took a couple of minutes to run so let's take a look at the details for it you can see it took a minute and 15 seconds did the backup and uh, protected my data but it didn't show any any replication so my uh, expectation is then that I need to explicitly set the replication when I'm manually running. So I'm going to run now and I'm going to add replication to there to Colab. I'm going to say retain for three days and replicate only successful runs. I'm going to back up now. Okay, so that protection job will start off. All right, well, that protection run has again completed quickly, but you can see a red status on the replication job. Kind of a worry. So the backup completed, but the replication task failed. And it failed because the other cluster doesn't know about this cluster. Well, it's a good thing that I have uh, access to my other cluster here, and I can set up remote clusters and add back the relationship in the other direction to the external interface on here uh, connect those allow replication and again set up my mapping between the two storage domains so now I have a symmetric relationship between the two clusters I should then be able to come in and run that protection job a third time and again with replication to Colab for three days on successful. Run that. Now my copy status task isn't showing red initially, so I have much higher hopes for a successful run of this replication. Once again, no need for you to wait for it. Uh, I will stop the recording and start again when it completes. Well, that's a much happier status. We have got our copy task showing green. If we take a look at the uh, actual run, we can see the backup task took, as usual, almost no time. And the replication task, being the first replication, has actually had to move uh, six gigs of, of data for each of my two uh, machines. And that took just under nine minutes to complete. So fairly successful, the uh, replication occurred. And if we take a look back at the dashboard in here, what do we see? Nothing significant change at the source side. But if I go across to the lab cluster side, uh, well, we've got some more going on. We've had some data ingest. Uh, we've, you can see some IOPS have come in in the last 24 hours. What I will do is leave this all running and particularly leave that bronze protection policy set to replicate. And we'll take a look in 24 hours. Uh, won't seem that long for you, but it will be 24 hours for me, at how the replication job, the, the subsequent replication job runs and see hopefully significantly less data transferred on the following replication runs. Well, it's the following day and my clusters are looking pretty good. Everything looks, looks healthy. If we dig in and take a look at the source for our replication, we'll go and have a look at the protection jobs that have been running there. And we see lots of nice successful protection job runs. Take a check on the last run now. This is the scheduled rather than one-off run of this protection job uh, last night. And as usual, bits of data moved around and the replication task uh, has also uh, run through. I was interested to notice there's not that huge of a drop in the duration for this. And the previous run was about eight minutes to uh, complete. This has dropped down to three. I suspect that's to do with the fact that we still have to go through and check for unique blocks to, to replicate. You can see that there's still a, a reasonable amount of data that's been transferred in this replication at the end.
So what have we achieved in here? We have set up a pairing between our two cohesity clusters and we had to set that up symmetrically. So we had to set up the pairing in both directions. And then we added replication to one of our backup jobs so that copies of our uh, protected virtual machines are at a, a remote location, in this case another cohesity cluster in, in another virtual data center. We're now set up for that failure of our primary data center and we'll look in a following video at how we handle that failover and look at the orchestration that's built into the Cohesity platform in order to fail over if we were to lose that primary data center that contains a live copy of all of our running machines, see how we could use the Cohesity platform for disaster recovery. Stay tuned for that video. It's fairly impressively simple once again to set up that replication. The key thing is that it's a bi-directional relationship between the two sites in order to set the replication up. I'm Alistair Cook. Stay tuned for more Cohesity Platform videos.